those dudes in the NFL will break him in half. It's a reason people play football. It's a reason people play basketball. You don't play boxing. You go out there and fight. Your goal is to lay the other guy down. Period. I'm always saying, if you, if you play football, or you play hockey, or you play, you know, or you, or you actually in the boxing, you got a couple screws with Because it's so many things that happen in those sports where it's like football, it's a constant collision. So, no disrespect to nobody playing football. I tried it, it wasn't for me because I didn't have a screw loose like y'all. Now, we ain't got no screw loose. It's not a screw loose. It's just. It's just. But see, that's a misconception. See, again, man, this is what they say on TV to make football sound good. It's not. It's not that. Okay, let me address something. Uh, he said LeBron was an all-state football football player. Yeah, and that's why he stopped playing football because he got his fucking arm broken, I think. And Tony Gonzalez, Grunt, and uh, Tony Gonzalez, Grunt, what about that kid who who been on the practice squad for the Dallas Cowboys for the last four years and they finally cut a mission? It's not that you can... You can find, this my man Microwave said that, you can find an exception to every rule, but 99 99.99.99999% of the time, if you are a football player, you're a football player for a reason. It's because you have mentally prepared yourself for those conclusions. And contrary to popular belief, unless you plan defense, you ain't trying to run it to nobody. Right, because if you're on offense, your thing is to get away from everybody. Right, yeah, okay, Earl Campbell used to run people over. But guess what? Earl Campbell also had some swivel in his hips. You know, he wasn't trying to run over everybody, but if he had to, he would run your ass over. So that's what I'm saying, that this whole thing, you know, uh, uh, you just looking for clears. Ain't nobody looking for clears. And with me, I just didn't want to get hit. I used. I just was like, nah. I don't want. I don't want you. I don't want to be the. Inf- I want to be the inflexer. I don't want to. Inf- I don't want to be impaled. Like nah, nah, nah. Right now. Right. And they're like nah. I, I, I'm not doing this because I was always an attack dude. I, when I played basketball, I was always on the attack. I was physical. I was too physical for a basketball player. So fighting enough. I, I literally wrote them off as soft and said, I'm going to play baseball and football. So, I mean, it's just, I, I don't think it's any different. I don't think there's no different, but it's just football players are football players. Basketball players are basketball players. Baseball players are baseball players. And that's just it. I mean, but but back to this, back to the profane thought. Uh, we, we, we are looking at a... This exhibition was just an exhibition. I don't understand. See, this this exhibition, in my personal opinion, you can respond to it if you like. This exhibition was the perfect example of why I don't like mainstream media. Everybody and their mother was like, Mike Tyson gonna kill somebody. And I'm like, what? This is an exhibition. And, and then and then you had people calling Mike crazy. And, and, and it's just a lot of things that I don't like around media. Uh uh. Uh, how does a, ba- a baseball player call a basketball player soft? Because basketball players are a bunch of pussies, if you ask me. If you if, if you really want me to answer that question, because basketball players, in my opinion, Michael Way, are a bunch of whining pussies. And they have been for the 50 years that I've been on Earth. Yeah, again, you can find some that are tough. I got some homies who are not chumps. But on the basketball court, they were a bunch of whining pussies. And baseball players, it's hard in the motherfucker to have somebody throw a rock at you 75 miles per hour that's curving towards your head and you're supposed to hit it with a stick. I mean, there's some basketball players out there that some of my guys, they listen to me, they're going to cuss me out when they see me and I'm cool with that and they know I'm cool with that but I've said this to their faces. To me, basketball players are a bunch of pretty boys. 
I'm a former baseball player, and I've I've met very few baseball players, basketball players that play baseball. Ba- baseball players, you got spikes coming at you, you got balls coming at you. Back in when I played, you could run and cut somebody's knees out. You could hit a uh, you could hit a catcher with everything you had. Baseball play, baseball might be one of the toughest games to play. So, basketball. When I look at when I look at basketball players, I literally say anybody. Any, 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 but again, you bring up one guy. There's nothing soft about Anthony Mason. There's a bunch of shit soft about. I, do you need me to name some of these dudes who you see cowering in the moment? Do you did you did you see that don't want no contact? How many times when you're a baseball player and you see a fight microwave, or better yet, you can call when you see a fight at a basketball game. It's it's hurry up and grab me when you see a fight at a baseball game. Folks is swinging. So, I mean, if you want to bring up Anthony Mason, for every Anthony Mason you bring up, I'll bring up another dude who's a fake tough guy like Charles Barkley. And you can bring up Oakley, and I'll bring up your man, Michael Joy. And you can bring up y'all man, Kobe, and I'll bring you Chris Childs. You know, it's just, yeah, we can find some basketball players that can, that can fight. But by and large, the culture of basketball, in my personal opinion, it's chalked full of pussies. And I challenge any one of my homeboys. I got homeboys that play professional basketball. I got homeboys that just were rec room, rec, rec center legends. And I got dudes who played against me that were scrubs. And, and, and maybe you got me who was just an athletic cat who played basketball. I think the basketball culture is chalked with pussies. That's just me. I don't have a problem being wrong. But if you got basketball players, football players, and baseball players and hockey players in the same room, by and large, we look over at the basketball players like chumps. I'm just saying. We like and you, you like some of them, but a lot of them do soft as hell. If I'm wrong, then so be it. I'm wrong. I have no problem with being wrong. I'm not telling you this is the rule. This is this is life. Life of coordination. It's just, hey, the way, I, in my experience, more times than not, you will get a chump playing basketball before you get a chump playing football. This just me? Just me. <laughs> really, Michael Way? You, re- you want to have this conversation? Cool. Baseball players, you've heard, you've heard of baseball players missing games because of a fingernail. Guess what? Horace Grant, Chicago Bull, in the midst of the Bulls run, missed the game because he had a sore throat. Was he going to eat the damn ball that night? Was he commentating that night? Was he was he connected to the microphone that night? No, he wasn't. And again, y'all want to bring up these individuals. I'll tell you what. I control you. I bet you I can name... This is what we'll do. If y'all want to do this, let's do it. Let's show, let's name all the tough ass football players. Let's name all the tough ass baseball players. And I bet you I can lap you with, with punk ass basketball players. And that's just the honest to God truth. I'm not trying to, I'm not saying everybody in the history of basketball is a chump. Are there some tough guys in basketball again? Hell yeah. Yes. But by and large, and from my experience, basketball players are a bunch of pussies. I'm just saying. And, and some of my closest friends are hoopers. Quentin Mandela, Ace in the Hole. Uh, 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 Randall Johnson, Ace in the Hole. Uh, uh, Cedric Trotter, Ace in the Hole. Uh, 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 Tremel Jackson, straight, good dude. My uncle, my favorite uncle in the history of the world, man. Played with the Spurs. So, I mean... I'm not saying every single solitary person on a basketball court is a pussy, but in my personal opinion, you find more pussies on that basketball court than anywhere else in sports. Period. And real life, and then it it bleeds off into the world. But that's neither here nor there. Back to the purvey conversation. <laughs> All right. Okay. I think Nate Robinson. I don't think. I don't think Nate Robinson can whoop my ass at this point. 
the way he was fighting, if you gave me eight weeks, I would beat the hell out of Nate Robinson. And and here's the thing. I've only been in a boxing ring one time with my man, former, well, he he's not a former, he's a bronze medal Olympic boxer. His name is Nate Jones. He's a friend of the show. He's been on the show. Nate Jones talked my dumb ass into getting into the ring with him, and he whipped my ass. I'm talking about Nate Jones. Nate the Snake Jones. Bronze a medal winner. Talk me when we were short is AB. Come on, B. Come on, B. Come on, B. And I said, yeah, because me and Nate competed at everything. And Nate whipped my ass. And I think at 50, if you give me four weeks, I will beat the hell out of Nate Rocks. You know what? Give me eight weeks because I'm 50. Four weeks is to get me in enough shape to be able to work out that hard. And that next four weeks is to work me out. And I, I, the way Nate Robinson was fighting, I would kick Nate Robinson at. But in regards to what, what we saw with the Tyson uh, 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 Jones thing, 50-year-old men shouldn't be fighting. Period. 50-year-old men yeah, shouldn't be fighting. He, he walked out there with it. So it was like, that was the suspect from the jump. And then, like, Mike Tyson hit him with a, with a cut shot, and he was holding his stomach for the rest of the fight. And that was, like, the first round. I mean, this boxing thing is no joke, man. There ain't no coaches, ain't no, ain't no, ain't nobody to block for you. That, that's a, that's a, man. Like I said, man, the only time I've ever been in the ring is at Sewer Park, Chicago, Illinois, on Division and Orleans, on the, in the wet in the East Gym, in the ring. Nate Jones whipped my ass, and this is before he was. He wasn't even. Nate was five years off going to the penitentiary. And he whipped, he beat. You could do it, you could do it. He went in there and showed me, hey man, this boxing shit for real dudes. And I seen my man Fisher, Robert Fisher, beat the snot out of the people. So that boxing shit, man, when you when you done lost the vigor for it, but, but uh, uh, you 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 lost it. And look like Roy, he don't have it no more. But one thing about uh, back to that's what I was saying to Mike Tyson. I don't like the way people uh, frame Mike Tyson. Whether we want to admit it or not, Mike Tyson is a wildly intelligent brother, man. He got a funny voice, and he's done some things that that people don't approve of. But Mike Tyson is an intelligent guy. He's well read, and bam, it's just. It's just, man, I I just, I don't understand. Like, they kept saying, Roy, Roy, what about how you feel? How you, he's like, why won't you ask me how I'm doing? And, you know, it's just, again, man, I hate to be the purveyor of bad news. I hate to be the dude always pointing the finger at mainstream media, but I just don't like the way the image of Mike Tyson is portrayed because when everybody else makes mistakes, makes mistakes, and then they turn their lives around, it is... Uh, it's forgotten almost. You, how often do you hear about uh, what's one man who played Iron Man? I can't Robert Downey Jr. How often do you hear about that he was a wild drug addict who almost pissed his career away? Because Iron Man saved it. Well, Tropic Thunder and Iron Man saved his career. But you 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 don't hear about how how he was a wild drug addict and almost shit his, shit his career away. So why are we always hearing about how crazy Mike Tyson is? And uh, I remember that fight that he bit that cat ear off and. I also remember several times during that fight, Mike Tyson turning to the ref saying, hey, he's headbutting me. He's headbutting me. He's headbutting me. Now, is, is biting somebody the smartest thing? No. No. But when you lose your when somebody pounding on your head and hitting you in the head with their head, you might not be in the right frame of mind. You 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 feel with rage. And man, hey, it was he could have done something even more egregious. But look, I just don't like the way Mike Tyson is framed. When you listen to him, bam, it's just, it, he, 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 uh, uh, exactly, exactly. Michael Wade brought up Tim Allen for home improvement. He's a drug dealer. He's a drug dealer, and nobody talks about that. But Mike Tyson, oh, you know, he's crazy. Mike Tyson, crazy. Mike Tyson ain't crazy. All I want to know is if people are being honest, this is what I want you to do with your honest opinion. Somebody take you back to the age 18. With the background that Mike Tyson had, and somebody hands you fifty million dollars, how how well would you react 
after coming on the street, fighting people from 